Hello, and thanks for joining me once again. So, it's a nice quiet week this week. We don't have the craziness of the Spark AI summer. We're not seeing a flood, a barrage of new releases. So we can actually take a step back and have a look at some of these new features and say, how do they work? How easy are they? How intuitive are they? So number one on my list is dynamic partition pruning. So this holy grail, if I've got something that looks like a star schema, and I want to filter one of dimensions, I want to hit that fact and properly partition prune my fact. Because um, one of the biggest problems that we have is trying to create a data model in a lake and have users actually query it in such a way that hits your partition key. Because it's, they won't. They will nearly always just query awkward, weird things that aren't quite what you expected them to filter them. So dynamic partition pruning, just one of the great things that we've got that we can now take a look at to say, how does it work? Is it any good? Does it actually filter things dynamically, which you know, you'd hope it does. So we're going to dig in, we're going to have a look, and uh, we're going to see if it works properly. And I'll talk a little bit about how you know when it's partitioning, just in case that's not your forte. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video. And then yeah, let's just dive in and see how it's going. Okay, right. So this is the slide I used when the Spark 3.0 announcement came out. I was like, hey, this is a load of different features. This is the slide I used to explain why dynamic partition pruning is good. So over on the left, we've got this fact sales, dim dates, and with the ones in red, essentially, without dynamic partition pruning, I read my entire table. And then if I filter my data, I go, oh, and then in memory for that entire table, I filter it back down again. So it's not very efficient. I'm reading way more data than I need to read. And the other side, I'm saying, well, actually, why don't I take that across? And because I know I'm going to filter this data down, just don't read the data that doesn't apply to that filter. Which historically, you have not been able to do in Spark. So this is what we're aiming for. But it's better to see it, right? So let's go and take a look. So we're in Databricks. I've got a notebook set up. I've got a few things in here. Let's just have a look what's going on. So I've got my Runtime 7 cluster, which I've named imaginatively. And most importantly, we've got Spark 3.0 in there. So this is using the latest Databricks runtime. And we've got all the fancy new features and all should be in there. So that is good. So I'm just going to make sure we've got uh, functions in. And then I've taken the classic, the adventure works of the big data world, which is the New York taxi data set. And I've just pulled it in. Uh, one little hint, if you've never actually looked at it, if you're playing around with Databricks and you want to have a play with some sample data, you've got uh, dbutils.fs. Dot mounts will tell you what's mounted to your lake, uh, to your Databricks cluster, sorry. And one of the things that you always get mounted is this Databricks data sets, which if you go and take a cheeky little peek at, you can say, well, what are, you, what are you mounting to my cluster that I didn't tell you about? You've got COVID, you've got some README, you've got a load of different stuff in here, bike sharing, essentially loads of example sample data is by default just mounted uh, to your cluster. So if you want to have a play with some stuff and you don't have a good data set, or you, you think you have to go away and find a few you know, gig of data and try and download it, have a look at the Databricks data sets. They're really good. And again, I've just taken the New York taxi. That's a load of CSVs. I've pulled it in as a Delta table and then just registered it. So we've got this Delta Lake, NYC, just New York taxi, stored as a Delta table. And because it's Delta, you can see you get these extra options when it's telling you about your data frame. So I can see my details. So I have partitioned this data on three different columns. I've got the year, the month, and the day. Uh, files, loads of good stuff in there. And you get your history in Delta. So I can say, I've just done an update. There's nothing else I've done in here. I've put some data down. That is it. So the main thing is, I want users to come and query based on this. I want them to be, don't take the actual date field. Don't take the pickup date timestamp. I want them to filter on this, and therefore, it'll do partition elimination. So let's have a look at a quick query. So we've got this, I want to do an aggregate data frame, and it's just saying, let's do it without the filters to start off with. You know, group by, aggregate, that kind of thing. It goes off and does it. I'm going to do aggregate data frame, data frame dot explain, and we can see what's going on. So we've got a file scan, so it's not cache data or anything. I'm going to file scan my parquet, do a lot of stuff, and then this is what we're interested in. This partition filters is empty. It's not going to filter any partitions. It's going to read my entire data set bring it back to me, and then if I want to do any filtering, it'll do that in memory. Okay, so actually let's build that into it. Let's recreate that. So this time let's take the good one, the partition, the, the pickup date month, which is one of our partition columns. Okay, so we've done that. And then if we do explain again, we should see, there we go. So partition filters now has one and is not null. 
So we filtered on it so it can't be null, but it also has a where the month is the date of Astful. So that's great. So that's doing proper partition filtering. It's going to go back and not read the data I don't want it to. So that's, that is good. That is fantastic. So if we do a quick display, and then we'll get into writing some code, uh, we can dive in here and say, what are you doing inside this? So we get the DAG, so we can actually go and see, we can see the stages. For me, one of the most useful is to have a look at this associated SQL query. So we can say, what are you actually doing under the hood? So we can say, it's doing a scan, and it's doing a filter and all that kind of stuff. And in here, so this is only hitting 54 of my files, and it's bringing back 7 million rows. And that's when it is doing proper partitioning. And we can see it's got this cheeky little thing that's new, this dynamic partition pruning, and it's not doing any. Because it didn't need to. I'm telling it explicitly, filter on the partition column. Now, if we go back and we change that around and say, well, actually, don't, don't be good. Don't do it on my actual pick a month. I want you to do it based on, you know, it's a timestamp that we're turning into the same format. We're turning into the same thing. So we can say, uh, do this on my four as well. Uh, so if we run that and then do an explain. So now we see there's no partition filter. So even though I'm filtering on something that is the same thing, it should fit in the same way, it can't because I'm, it's doing it on a calculated column. It's not going to pass that through. So when we try and run that, we should see the amount of rows it reads is huge in comparison. Going to have a go, going to think about some stuff. Let's just dive into that query again so we can see what's going on. Okay, so there we go. Number of files read, 96 and rows output 84 million. So that's doing the full thing. So we can use that as a bit of a benchmark. So whenever we're querying this, if we're getting fewer than 936 files, we know it's doing some kind of partition elimination. So that, that is our goal. We want to see 7 million rows read. We don't want to see 84 million. Okay, so that's, that's all standard. There's nothing new there. That is just partitioning and why we like it. So let's try and do something dynamic, right? So my users aren't gonna know that pick up year, pick up month, they're my columns. I want them to be able to just filter on a date dimension, which is the, the classic scenario. So I've got this table, so delta like dot date. I mean, just it's a, the most straightforward date dimension known to man. I actually just did a distinct on uh, days in my other one. So let's just do date df, have a look what's in there. Yada, yada, yada. And there we go, so it's just a load of dates. But this is much more kind of what your users kind of, they're used to. They're used to looking here and going, oh, okay, I want a query based on calendar month where it's, and they want to query that kind of thing. Whereas historically, if they did that, it wouldn't, it would treat it like a calculated column. So it wouldn't hit that partition uh, filtering. So I'd get my whole 84 million back and it'd have to filter it down in memory. So a couple of different things. So I've got a filter. I want to filter this down to the right thing. Um, so let's do that first. So I've got DateDF doing that. Uh, what do they call my original data frame? I think I was naughty. I think I just called it DF. I did. Oh, terrible. Okay, so we're saying I want to make a new joined data frame. Uh, and that's going to be equal to DF joins to my date data frame. I want to join it based on, so DF dot uh, pickup day, whatever that was called. So let's do it based on that lowest level of partitioning. I would say where that is equal to my date df. And in there I've got, what have I got? Uh, calendar day is the one that's the same. And that's going to be in, in a join, right? Okay, so I can do that. I can specify that, join those two together, make sure we're happy. And then before, I've not actually ran this filter yet. So unfiltered, we can have a look at what it looks like. And there we go. So it's picking up, it is picking up a partition filter. So on Delta Lake NYC, so on our actual facts table, uh, it's picking up a filter, but the only filter it's picking up is don't be null. I'm trying to join on this column, therefore it can't be null. That's it. Otherwise it's bringing back the full data set, which makes sense because we've not filtered anything. So if we do this again, so this time we're gonna apply a filter into our date, um, date dimension, then recreate that join data frame. So going back to DF, we're going back to date, uh, date DF, and then explain it. And you can see we've got a load more things. So under partition filters, suddenly have this actual filter in there. Ooh, I think that's not it. You shouldn't have it there. And then I've got some dynamic partition pruning. So actually, I think, is that in there from there? That's okay. 
So when we actually do this, we should be able to do a join DF, do a display on it. Let's have a look what happens. Does a quick query, checks out the delta uh, log, and then creates our actual thing. So if we look in here, first thing it does is do a scan of the delta lake date table. So it's going, well, okay, we're joining from this table. We need to know what this table looks like. So it's reading a few files, it's doing that. It then spits that out into a broadcast exchange, and then it's basically applying a subquery, which it then passes into the read step. So I've only got three files read. I've only got four thousand rows clicking out. So I'm actually doing a proper filter of that, and you can see kind of dynamic partition pruning time is it has some time against it. We have used dynamic partition pruning. So I never actually went anywhere near my fact table. I filtered a smaller table, I joined it to my fact table, and it's passed through the context of that filter to use partition pruning, which is great. So my user didn't have to think, this is my partition key, this is what I'm trying to do it on. Um, all they had to know is, I'm, I can query my date dimension and it'll apply to my fact. Now there's some differences I found when I was kind of messing around with this. So one, I'm filtering on the join key. So that's gonna feel a little bit weird anyway. So let's just go back and redo this. So gonna recreate my, Date table, let's change this I'm doing on calendar month. So I'm no longer filtering on the column that I'm actually joining on. It's a different attribute that I wanted to then get a subset of days and use that to filter. So we wanna see this calendar month going across as a filter even after we've done that. So we can now recreate our join, have a look at my explain, and we should still see some things going on. So partition filters are still in there and it's got this dynamic pruning expression. So it's not filtering directly on the column this time, whereas last time it just picked it up as a straight column filter. Now we've got this dynamic pruning expression. It's gonna go and do that. It's still gonna be a day in a set of days. So, okay, we can go and recreate that thing, run it again, get to a point where we can go and look at the thing, akin to SQL, and then what's going on here? Okay, so we've got more rows, because we're looking at a month, not a specific day, but it's doing the same thing. It's going to go work out a subquery, get the results for that, apply that into a thing. Now we're getting 54 and 4 million, uh, sorry, 4,000 rows back. So it's actually still doing proper partitioning. That looks like it's still got the day. Mm, okay. Let's go and make sure that's actually happening properly. So it's good. It's actually taking it and applying it. Uh, the thing that I wanted to figure out is what happens if you do it the other way around? So great that that's actually doing the month. But if we go back, we recreate this and we take it over the plot. I'm just gonna make sure that DF doesn't have any filters applied to it. Make sure that's clean. If we got that, that's okay. Yeah, so we've got no partition filters. So it is currently unfiltered, which is good. So we're gonna recreate that. So this is now no filters applied. So we're taking two full tables, joining them together. So we look at the explain for that. Again, we should see it's got the is not null, but we don't have anything else in there. And then if we take that joined data frame and we do a filter on there. So we're gonna say, well, right, this should be joined DF. It's gonna be that same thing. Now with the filter applied, and that filter needs to be dot delta lake dot date dot calendar year. Uh, calendar month actually, so. I'm going to say that is 2019.04. So we're applying the filter after we've done that joining together. So again, let's have a look at how that's changed it. So join DF, dot explain. See what's going on. And again, so we've got partition filters in there. And again, it's rebuilt that dynamic partition pruning expression. So whether or not we pre-filter it and then join it and then look at the results, whether we join them together and then filter it afterwards, it's still managing to find out that there's gonna be some dynamic partition pruning going on, which is, again, what we wanna see. The worst thing would certainly be, you know, if there was a, a really specific set of steps that our users had to go and actually apply these changes, and then it would be okay and it would find out how it works, they're just not gonna do it. Uh, and again, yeah, so the same thing in here. So it's doing the filtering projecting that out, passing that in, we're getting our filtered rows. So that is happening quite nicely. So that's essentially it in a nutshell is dynamic partition pruning. It's just turned on uh, in Spark 3.0. And in this case, I don't have anything special set up. I haven't optimized my Delta 
this is a new cluster. I don't even think auto optimize is turned on. So this is just a straight take my data, write it down to the lake using a partition by clause in Delta format, and then trying to use it, it just goes off and it works out that it's doing it properly. So let's see if I can do that another way. So both of those were registered as SQL tables. So I should be able to say in SQL, I want to select uh, oh, uh, from delta lake.nyc, I'm going to call that n, and join to my delta lake.date, musical ID. That's just on my calendar year, whatever it was called back in the other one. So my calendar month or calendar day, there we go. So I need essentially that same thing. Use a bit of that. Okay, so that should be my pickup date day. It's equal to, okay, so that's essentially running the same query. So I'm saying we'll actually do those things, but now I can add a where statement in. Say where, where my D calendar month is equal to 2019.04. So that should be doing, again, a very similar thing. It's saying take these two things, join them together. Again, it looks like I'm getting almost exactly the same execution plan. So check my SQL query, and there we go. So we've got it doing that broadcast subquery. The first thing, work out what it needs to do, partition that, hitting fewer rows, and that's getting my dynamic partition group. So again, without me having to do anything in data frames, without me having to do trick the users anyway, as long as they join it on the right key, then I'm happy. And I could just name these things. I could call that my date key and call it date key, and then people are just going to join based on it and then they're going to hit dynamic partition pruning. And that just suddenly opens up a whole world of performance. So for me, that means if I can do it in the SQL side, that means I can do things like plug it into Power BI. So if someone is doing a direct query in Power BI over the top of this, and they filter the date table, not the main table, and it does that as a direct pass down query, um, push down, push down, <laughs> then it's going to hit dynamic partition uh, pruning, which is great. Suddenly that opens up a whole world of good performance. He does. So really, really good. So it looks like, again, some of the Spark 3.0 stuff, stuff, I've not turned it on. It's just turned on by default, and that's going to speed up a ton of the things that we're doing. So number one feature looks pretty darn cool. So I'm going to continue doing this kind of stuff. So once a week, I'll pick a different new feature in either Spark 3.0 or the Databricks um, announcements. Can't wait for those Git projects to come out so we can take a look at that. And yeah, if you've got any questions, anything you want to fi figure out, anything you're curious about, let us know in the comments and we'll see about lining up a future video. Otherwise, there's some other videos for you to check out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Cheers.